the bright up here for the greatest show on earth, the Washed Up Loser Olympics 2021. After a long wait, you can finally witness elite athletes from around the world competing in sports that most people don't care about. But enough about the real Olympics, you're going to watch the bargain bin version that aired at the same time with me, Asian reporter and returning champion Elgin Tensity, aka the Ayatollah of the Trapezola. And they're off. Opening heat for the women is underway, and it's Danielle Brandon who is out front early. Turi Helgadotter right behind her, followed by Laura Horvath and Samantha Briggs. They start, it's a long straightaway. It starts with a slight decline. Not much of it, but just enough to have a good start, maybe lull some athletes into a false sense of speed and intensity. It looks like that ship has sailed because this event is called a sprint, but they're not sprinting. Nobody, at least of all a competitive exerciser, is going to maintain near top speed over that distance. I'm not surprised that Dave Castro thinks a sprint should go for 500 meters when he also thinks a deadlift should go for 24 seconds. Nothing says fittest on earth like running almost as fast as the camera guy. Trying to follow up a strong performance in event number two with another solid showing here, but as we saw it in the men's competition, the competition around you in the heat makes a difference. Absolutely, and we saw that no more apparent than in heat four of the men's. It was the, one of the slowest heats we've had of the four, where the third heat was the fastest. So what Brandon needs to do is really focus on keeping, almost pushing yourself to the red line. Actually, her competitors pushed her to that line. Brandon came into contact with teammates who tested positive with an on-site antigen test, so the medical team isolated her from the rest of the competitors in every heat, despite testing negative herself. That same team allowed those other three to run with her out of solidarity. All they did was push her to run ahead of them and isolate anyway, which brings new meaning to lax adherence to COVID precautions contributing to a surge. It's a traditional clean ladder, but now we're adding a little something new. Yeah, we took the speed out of it from bar to bar. We added a 200 meter run, but we still have to go fast because that truncated time cap is forcing an intensity on this event that a lot of people weren't thinking about. Fourth and the final heat, the overall leaders on the floor, Tia Toomey, with 482 points, sits atop the overall leaderboard. Haley Adams able to cut into Toomey's lead in the last event, shaves nine points off of it. Adams is now 48 points back, and she is wearing whoop. We'll keep an eye on her heart rate. She is through. Now, she is ahead of Haley Adams, who now just stepped into view. And is as tight as this event is, as Haley Adams fails, tells us to watch her heart rate, doesn't post it when it counts. Then again, it wouldn't really matter because excessive hand motion may cause the strap to move against the skin, making it difficult to detect true HR. If she had upward elbow motion during that clean, then the girl who got a whoop might not have gotten a whooping. And now Catherine David's daughter. David's daughter is struggling, won't be able to hit it. I'm going to need a brainwave readout from the media team for making the main feed look like the StarCraft minimap. Much better. Lifting has been her weak link for so long that she should dump her coach next. I get that a team can feel like a family, but she's raising dead weight ugly as a motherfucker like Chris Chan. Event 7 was basically the same, but with heavier weights and less running. Especially for Adams. And that's Haley Adams, who has yet to make her first lift. Adams came in in fourth place overall. I was wondering who was operating this camera, but it appears to be a security guard who thinks she's loitering. Go. Oh, Haley's gonna go for it. She lacks the neuromuscular development to keep up with the other lifters, but at least her weak system makes her a high priority candidate for a certain shot. Event 14 of 15, and we have a brand new movement we have never seen before at the games. Sean, at the, as the weekend advances, the test evolves. And as the test evolves, the athletes must adapt. And now we see a freestanding handstand push-up for the first time in CrossFit competition. And for more on that, let's go down to Mike Arsenault. Think of these lines as wet paint. The athletes have to get wet paint on their hands, on each of their hands, for each rep to count. Let's see who's been doing their homework, as these have been alluded to for the past few years. Castro has had lead paint in his meals for using this as a test of fitness a movement that managed to outshine the deadlifts. Carnage going on on the right side of your screen is 
some of the most elite athletes in the world struggle through this movement, but Dave Castro, as you said, is now raising the bar as far as what is expected from the men and the women when they get here. High rep box jumps aren't hardcore enough, so CrossFitters went from using their Achilles tendons as pogo sticks to using their spinal columns. But Dave does this every single year. In 2009, 12 years ago, handstand push-ups made their debut in the CrossFit Games. And it wasn't strict, and it wasn't kick. It was a deficit, strict, parallel handstand push-up. In 2009, this is not something we've never seen before from Dave Castro. So it's brand new, and not something we've never seen. Chase Ingram has clearly been dropped on his head many times, so be forewarned if you plan on performing this party trick. 40 seconds before we hit the time cap. You have to stabilize that hand position before you can bring the head back down, so that's not going to count. His judge is telling him that Scott Patrick needs to retreat. Confusion and disorientation are common symptoms of head injuries, which apparently some of the judges also have. It's a miss and a full And rep. another no rep for Vellner as we now approach the six minute mark, one minute left, and now Medeiros is down. The man with the natty blunt force defense fails his rep on line five, but restarts on line four as instructed by the judge, who had one unpaid job to do. Has one to go. He thought he was done. Felder is done. Felder will win. Here, the judge realizes that they both skipped the line and makes him do another rep. It ended up not mattering because Medeiros won the games, but this mishap shouldn't have occurred, along with the event itself. If gymnastics is like diving into a pool without water, then this CrossFit version is like dunking your head into a toilet without one. The new CrossFit owner and CEO can't be very serious about ending the culture of bullying at the company when his games director is basically giving people swirlies. Thank you, Sean. You know, the last time that we saw a one rep max snatch event at the CrossFit Games was back in 2017. And at that point, Kara Saunders took the win with 203 pounds lifted. Right now, the max snatch of all the athletes on the competition floor is up to 220. So given how far these athletes have come over the past few years, I'm sure we're going to see some big numbers tonight. Speaking of big numbers, CrossFit sold out to Monster this year, even though CrossFit has been crusading against sweet drinks and Monster's minority shareholder for years. Promoting Monster because it has a sugar-free option is like promoting McDonald's because it serves salad. We now return to Chase Ingram, who's serving word salad. And again, that's why I love that we're doing the snatch here. We already tested the clean. The accuracy component, just to try to put it in perspective, think of you shooting a free throw from the free throw line. The accuracy needed on a snatch is like shooting a free throw into a golf hole. That was like Laurel Hubbard shooting for a women's Olympic weightlifting medal, only to leave the sport the same way he came. Just say that the lift is more technical. Then say that getting certified to teach this technical lift to CrossFitters is like Laurel Hubbard shooting into a urinal. And now for the clip you've all been waiting for. Now Wells, in her last one, missed the first one out front. Brooke Wells is going to be tended to by the medical team here. Shooting a ball in a hole, you mean shooting pain up her arm? A lot of people got upset at anybody who reposted this footage, but let's get one thing straight, unlike her elbow. Most of us didn't have a problem with the videos and memes of Conor McGregor's leg snap not long ago. If you're okay with a video of him sustaining an MMA injury, then you should be okay with a video of Brooke Wells essentially getting arm barred. She might have lost a funny bone, but some of you never had one. The medical team is so desensitized to crossfitters dropping barbells on themselves that it took them a while to respond, but one of them eventually moved the arm back into place and put Humpty Dump Truck back together again. Notably, she started wearing a compression sleeve that day, but she attempted the weight anyway. I guess there's no reason to hit the brakes when you can always try out for the adaptive division. Injuries are part of sports, but moronic injuries are part of pseudo-sports that call for maxing out on a technical lift after 11 events with short rest times and weights that you can't choose. The most Olympic thing about this farce is the fact that she's using her platform to cry for attention with a dramatically bent joint. The only reason to watch the CrossFit Games instead of the Olympics is that you probably won't see self-absorbed athletes acting stunning and brave, just impact-absorbing clowns getting stunned and caved. 
An unusually high number of CrossFitters, some of whom were lucky enough not to be on camera, withdrew from the games this year due to injuries, but CrossFitters are still going to program and attempt these circus acts. CrossFit is not only a bargain bin version of Olympic sports, but a more dangerous variant that spreads across the globe. Zero! Like the video and subscribe to the channel, now.